Hi, welcome to In Your Bible, where we believe all the answers we need for life are in your Bible. I'm your host, George W. Green. This is part three of a series. The series is The Truth About Tithing. All right, this is part three. Uh, in this section, I want to briefly take a, do a brief overview of the Old Testament and how we relate to that. A brief overview of the New Testament as relates particularly to uh, uh, the law in general. And then I want to spend a few minutes looking at some charts that I have prepared. These, uh, the purpose of these charts is to help us understand what God was saying to the Israelites as it applies to tithing. Uh, <clears throat> what we understand, what we practice uh, and call tithing these days is not even close, you heard me, not even close to what the Lord laid down for the Israelites. All right? Keep in mind that what I'm telling you uh, is that uh, God, God does not require Christians to tithe. Your organization, your group, your church, your denomination, they may require it from you as, as a <clears throat> They're free to require it, but what I'm telling you is that God no longer requires it, and we I have scripture to back this up. All right, let's look at the scriptures. Uh, first, let me give you an overview of the uh, Old Testament in, in general. Just, I'm not an expert on the Old Testament. I'm not an expert, so to speak, on the entire Bible, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, I want to talk very briefly about the term law. When, when that term is used in reference to the Bible, all right, in reference to the Bible, generally what people are speaking of, what the Bible is speaking about when it uses the term, it's referring to the laws that God laid down for the Israelites. There are over 600 of those laws that he laid down, and the majority of them, if not all of them, are in the first five books of the Bible. Uh, those first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and, and Deuteronomy, they're <clears throat> they're all in all, if not all of them, most of, most of them are in those first five books. Um, another term that's used uh, to identify the law is the term Pentateuch. Okay, that is um, uh, it's talking about the first five books. Uh, the, the the Jews would call it uh, the Torah. Okay, those first five books of the Bible. Um, now. Uh, th th that was just the first five books. Looking at the Old Testament uh, in general, we have uh, a number of books, Christianity, the King James Version, New International Version, uh, those standard versions like that. Um, our Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, uh, agree essentially agrees with what the Jews call uh, the Hebrew Bible. Right? The way the books are numbered are different. Right, but the same content, essentially the same content is there. So there's no major division there. And I, I don't know why uh, Jews and Christians can't get along a little bit better. Okay? We supposedly reference a lot of the same scripture. I think it's our interpretation of some of those scriptures that causes more divides than necessary. In any case, um, those laws then are divided a couple of different ways. Okay? One way those laws are divided... Um, in, in Judaism, let me read this for you, the law is divided, uh, uh, the general term law is divided in a, a term that it also says law, and another category of prophecy, and another category called writings. Okay, that's one way to look at those, um, the Old Testament. Uh, <clears throat> another way it's divided, another way it's actually of three, history books, poetry books, and wisdom books. All right, that's, that's uh, another Jewish way of looking at it. Um, uh, traditionally, uh, Christians, it seems, uh, try to divide the Old Testament in, on the terms of moral, civil, and ceremonial law. I've heard tell that uh, the... The moral laws were supposed to keep forever, and that those were those were never changing, and that the civil and ceremonial laws are the ones that we can set aside, and and uh, we don't have to do those. But the moral laws we still have to do. Uh, I want to suggest to you that uh, that division, moral, civil, and ceremonial, that's not really a, a, a good division. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into it at this time. 
but at another time, possibly we can get into that to, so I can explain what I mean by that. Um, uh, you know, because if you just were to look at the, the moral laws uh, and say that they're all timeless, then if, when, if you really take a look at those, there would still be a lot of issues, a lot of issues, a lot of unresolved things. I'm going to leave this as unresolved. I do want you to pay attention in the future, and I'm sure I'll have to come back to this. Not in this series, okay? Not in this series. Um, um, the laws in general then, let me point out, uh, they cover everything uh, that the Israelites needed to do, all right, in order to please God. They, they told them things, the laws describe things that they were supposed to do. For instance, things like when and how to perform animal sacrifice, uh, how the priests were supposed to be dressed. Uh, they, the laws detailed what the priest's responsibilities were. Uh, you know, the priest would, uh, the, one of their responsibilities would be to judge between complaining members, okay? If there was, um, if one person, if one Israelite had a problem with another person um, and they couldn't resolve it, they would take it to the priest and the priest would rule, you know, he was familiar with the law, all right, the written law, and would interpret the parts that he needed to interpret and give a ruling in that situation. Uh, the, uh, something else uh, that was in the laws, the, the festivals, the festivals that, that the Israelites were to observe, the details for that was also in the law. So the law was very large. It covered a lot of things. You know. It covered um, uh, uh, the governmental things, welfare, uh, everything was in there. Okay. Um, uh, a few other things were in the law, just in the area of offerings, all right? There's a whole lot of different offerings that the Israelites needed to do. Not all Israelites had to do all these offerings all the time. No, it depended on the circumstances. Let me just read a couple of them to you. Um, there was the uh, burnt offering, the first offering, uh, I'm sorry, first offspring of every womb, the drink offering, the fellowship offering, and one that you're familiar with, the free will offering. Uh, there was a grain offering, and then there was a grain offering for jealousy. You got to read the Bible for yourself to see where that would apply, applied in the past. There was the guilt offering. Uh, there was a praise offering for new fruit trees. Uh, there was a purification offering, a sin offering, and a thank offering. This is not all the offerings that they had to observe. There was, the list is, is longer, okay? Um, you can add to that list instructions about tithing, okay? Instructions about tithing. Let me read something to you. Tithing was just one piece of a complicated, intertwined set of instructions that the Israelites were to follow that impacted both their spiritual life and their government. That's exactly the way to run a relatively small theocracy uh, where there was only one temple. All these laws were never intended to manage all of Christianity. Now, let's make a distinction here. Um, and uh, when we get into this uh, later in, in another series talking about the law <clears throat> and what applies now, really what we need to understand is the Principles. What principles was God laying out in, 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 in his laws? Okay, what principles? Uh, that's really the, the key to understanding what we should be doing now. Um, so, I'm not advocating, I am not saying that we're supposed to throw out all of the Old Testament laws. I'm not saying that. All right. Um, what I'm saying is we need to understand the principles that God laid out embedded in those laws and, and uh, we need to understand that. Fortunately, Jesus knew we would struggle with that, trying to get that understanding, so he gave us a head start. Okay? Um, let me read this to you um, in Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34. Uh, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I'll stop there. Now, Jesus, being very familiar with the scriptures, okay, very familiar with his father, understood, okay, what he gave us here, what he revealed here is the foundation in verse 40. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. He gave us the foundation for all those 613, or approximately 600 laws that are detailed in the Old Testament. He gave us the foundation right here, okay? Now, and Jesus didn't just make those up, all right? He was quoting from at least two different parts of the Old Testament. He quoted from uh, Leviticus 19.18, love your neighbor. Uh, he also qu quoted from uh, Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God with all your strength. Uh, <clears throat> so, here I maintain, here I'm telling you, is the foundation that will help us understand the... Um, um, what it is that we need to do now in order to please God. It's not a matter of obeying laws, these you know, 600 plus laws. It's not a matter of that. It's a matter of understanding. He gave us the foundation. It's a matter, it's a matter of understanding and applying the principles laid out in the foundations that Jesus just gave us. Uh, <clears throat> now, New Testament. Okay, we're living in New Testament times. Let me make it very clear. Let me just give you a few scriptures. We are free from the law. Okay, being free from the law doesn't mean we're throwing, doesn't mean that I'm throwing out all the old, all the laws. I'm not doing that. I'm telling you what the Bible says that we are free from the law. Um, Romans six fourteen. I'll just read a couple of them here. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. So we're not free to sin because we're not under law. No, the Bible makes it very clear in more than one spot that we're not free to sin. Uh, another example, Romans 10.4. Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Uh, <clears throat> then in uh, Galatians, we're warned about trying to continue to obey the law or pieces of the law. See, that's generally where we get in trouble as Christians. Uh, I don't hear any, I've never heard any Christian teacher or leader say that we need to obey all of the laws. All right? I don't, I've never heard anybody say that, and I think that's correct. What I do hear and what you hear on a regular basis is that you hear leaders say that, well, this piece of the Old Testament law we need to obey and this piece over here and tithing and, and, and they, it's kind of like a menu almost where they, people seem to pick and choose the things that they like, the things that they believe that should be carried over. I don't think so. Okay, from not from what I understand here. Let me read you another one. Galatians 2.16. 2, um, know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, so that, uh, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law. Because by observing the law, no one will be justified. Um, <clears throat> pretty clear there. All right. To me, it's pretty clear. I hope, hopefully, it's pretty clear to you as well. Uh, let me give you just a little bit more. Uh, Galatians 3.11. Okay, just a little bit further down in the book of Galatians 3.11. Clearly, no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. I don't want to add too much to this. Okay? It's really as, as simple as it seems. Uh, Christ redeemed us from the curse. So a lot of you, I can imagine, will think about, uh, you've been taught about Malachi, that you're cursed if you don't tithe. That does not agree with what we just read here. Okay? Does the Bible say that in Malachi? That, yeah, you'll be cursed if you don't tithe? Yes, it absolutely says that. All right? And I'll cover that uh, a little bit later um, uh, in an in a upcoming section. Uh, 
<clears throat> but clearly, what I'm telling you is that you're not cursed because you don't tithe. You're not cursed because you don't uh, worship on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is Saturday. All right. Uh, also, you couldn't on the Sabbath day. You couldn't walk too far. You couldn't go too far. You couldn't work at all on the Sabbath. All right. There's a lot of things we would have to do differently if we were going to obey everything that was in the law. All right. So it's not just a menu, like I said earlier, where we get to pick and choose what we would like. Um, one more verse, uh, Colossians uh, two, verse thirteen. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. The laws that God gave to the, for the Israelites to obey, uh, he also intended for us Christians, after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and after uh, the pouring out of his uh, Holy Spirit, that we would no longer be governed by those laws. Right? Um, and that was spoken about a long time ago, in, in well before it happened. Not just because we're picking it up in the New Testament, all right? no, but because this was all prophesied before. Okay? Excuse me, all spoken about before. Um, so, really what happens when you try to keep even part of the law, you know, you just keep your favorite part. I like tithing, I like the Sabbath, I like uh, uh, this sort of sacrifice, I like to give this sort of offering, so I'll do that. I'll do the fine flower and I'll give this sort of offering. Where are you going to give it, by the way? Um, uh, but Galatians 3.10, let me read this to you. Uh, and what I'm trying to tell you is, actually, by you trying to obey part of the law, you actually wind up being cursed. It's not my opinion. Let me read it to you. Galatians 3.10. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. So if you're going to try to obey um, parts of the law, <clears throat> you really put yourself under a curse because you, you're not obeying all the laws. Right? All, the, all of the appropriate 600 plus laws that are supposed to be obeyed, you're, you're not doing that. Okay? Uh, the point is that you can't do it. Nobody did it but Jesus in terms of really doing it right. Okay? Nobody did it but Jesus. Um, we are free from that. Okay, we are free from that. Um, <clears throat> so I will, um, I will stop here. Okay, on, on that subject, the, the, in terms of being in an overview, just wanted to spend a few minutes. This in no way explains all the freedom we have, but uh, I want to make sure we're at least in agreement on. If not in agreement, at least you understood where I'm coming from. All right. Now I want to take a few minutes to talk about the. Uh, the charts that I've prepared, hopefully you've downloaded those uh, and, you, and you're taking a look at them right now. Just going to spend just a few minutes on them. Uh, the first one I want to take a look at is the, uh, at the top of the list that says tithing verses. Okay. Now what I've done is to go through the entire Bible, and I'm sure many of you have done the very same thing. The thing that's different about what I've done here, uh, <clears throat> instead of listing every sentence, I've listed groups of sentences that, uh, that contain those words and that uh, we're dealing with the same kind of tithes. You heard me, kind of tithes. There were multiple kinds of tithes detailed in the Old Testament. Depending on how you count them, it might be four, it might be five. Okay, I'm going to deal with, I'm going to say there's four, and I'm going to give you detail for each one of them. All right, for each one of them. Um, uh, so you see the divisions there. First of all, it's the Old Covenant, and then in the Old Covenant, there's tithing incidents that came before the law. We need to take a look at those. Not looking at those first, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> and then, the, the, the really, the most important part of this are the next section, the creation of the tithing laws. That, in that section, those first five books, they created, all the laws were created. Um, 
but I want to focus on the tithing laws and when they were created. Uh, the next section uh, it says additional scriptures. Now you notice that's still in the Old Testament. There, here's now scriptures where uh, we can read where uh, tithing was spoken about, tithing was practiced, and of course in Malachi there was a, a great warning about, about tithing. Uh, <clears throat> now, I'm actually not going to spend a lot of time, I'm not going to spend any time talking about these additional scriptures with the exception of Malachi, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Why not? The reason I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it is because I just told you that we are free from the law. We are free from it. All right? Those things that the law required do not apply to us. All right? Those, uh, we're talking about tithing right now. Okay? They don't apply to us. Uh, so, uh, likewise, uh, just to give you a, a com for comparison, there's detail, much detail there in the in the Bible that talks about how a priest should be dressed. Now, we could have a little Bible study session and study every garment and every tassel and everything that the priest had to wear and what it meant, the little phylacteries and the, and the tassels and the, and the this and the that. We could study all those things. All right? But what would it benefit us? There is a principle that's contained in there, yes. Okay? So it wouldn't harm us to to, to study that, but what's the real payoff? Okay, what's the real payoff? Likewise, we can study tithing to death. You can do that with somebody else. You're not going to do it with me. Okay, you can study the subject of tithing to death. And you'll see, I left, as you, if you glanced ahead, I put some question mark in some areas. All right, that's not for you to answer them. You can if you want to. I'm not encouraging you to go further studying the, the tithing issue. You can study forever. All right? The question is, how should we relate to it now? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for us now? That's what we need to get across. That's what we need to understand. All right? So then uh, the next section has to do with scriptures that are in the New Testament. Uh, we're going to look at Jesus' words that one incident is recorded in two Gospels, Matthew 23, 23, and the same thing in Luke 11, 42. All right, uh, and then there's one other mention of uh, tithing or a tenth or a tenth having to do with giving in Luke 18:12, uh, and then there's mention in epistles as, as well, a small mention in, in epistles uh, in the book of Hebrews. So we'll take a look at. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on you know the additional scriptures in the Old Testament where the where the term was used. Um, I'm also not going to spend a lot of time on, on Hebrews, all right? In the book, I spent some time on it, uh, but um, uh, <clears throat> I'm not trying to present myself as a tithe master, know everything about it. I'm not trying to make you a tithe master, a person who would know all about the tithe. Uh, what, you leave me, what you leave here with, what I'm going to give you here is going to be Pretty significant as it is, okay? Just as it is. The next document um, I'd like to, that I prepared for you is the one titled Other Israelite Occupations, all right? And I notice on their partial listing, this is not all the, this, this is not a complete list of all Israelite occupations at that time. This is just a partial list. I have a point to make at that with that, and uh, we'll get to it at that time. Um, <clears throat> The next chart here, and this is the one with most of the question marks on it. You'll enjoy this for those of you, for those of you that want to find something wrong with my presentation. That'll be easy, all right? This is not, this is not the perfect presentation. This is not, okay? This is a presentation to uh, intended to cause you to think, all right? You ought to check out what I'm saying. Make sure that what I'm saying, I'm interpreting the principles correctly. Okay, interpreting the principles correctly. Uh, up until now, a lot of you have been dealing with people trying to interpret the law correctly. Mm, it's really bigger than that. Okay, what principles is God trying to get across? Uh, and speaking about principles, let me deviate for just a moment. What Jesus said, and what I quoted earlier in Matthew 22, he said, he talked about two things. The greatest commandment being uh, your relationship with God, loving God, and then the second part being the relationship with man. 
that is very consistent if when you look at the Ten Commandments, the first several commandments deal with uh, your relationship with God, and the next ones what? Deal with your relationship with uh, individuals, with your neighbors. All right. So uh, this is this is very very consistent. All right. Jesus was very consistent. You're not surprised, are you? Um, okay. This chart, the um, uh, Israelite seven-year cycle uh, and jubilee. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. The point is there were <coughs> tithing did not occur. The different kind of different tithes occurred at different times. Right? There were multiple tithes. I, I said four, right? At least four, depending on how you count them. Um, <clears throat> and as we go through, you can reference this list. I'll reference this list um, so you can see what, what, it, what I'm talking about here. Um, and the last chart is, is hopefully the most interested one, the interesting one, required tithes under the law. All right? Now, if you're going to follow along with me, I suggest that you make five copies of this sheet for yourself. For each person would have five blank copies, all right? Um, even though there's four, uh, I'm talking about four uh, ties, I divide one of them up in, in the two, and it, you can, it, to me, it would work better if you had five blank sheets. Uh, so we name the ties, and then I look to answer each one of these questions. What does it say? Why, who, what, when, where, how, and, and who did they give it to? Okay, we want to answer each one of those questions. I want to show you, I want to simplify for, simplify for you to show you that this, you know, that these ties are very distinct, they're very separate, and they're pretty clear, pretty clear, I have some question marks there, pretty clear on what is supposed to happen. You know, who's supposed to receive the tithe, who's supposed to give it, where's it supposed to go, it's, it's great. It's, most of it I was able to follow and in there and I want to and, and follow it in the scriptures and I want to share that with you. As I said, I've got a couple of question marks in a few of these spots as well. Right? I'm not trying to make you a tithe master. Can't. I'm not a tithe master, so to speak. I can't tell you everything about it. Okay. Um, now, the uh, as I told you, this is a multi-part presentation. Uh, this has been uh, part three. <clears throat> you know, I appreciate you watching or, or listening. Uh, some of you are listening by uh, tape, and, and, and some of you are, are watching this by, by video. Uh, and thank you for doing either. Uh, I hope you plan on joining me next time as we continue in this series, uh, The Truth About Tithing.